There is no scenario where that won't be funny. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's awful, but I really like it. It's so terribly bad. Anyway, speaking of bad, it's Nathan Wrigley here from the WP Builds podcast. Uh, but hopefully, my guests will create something that's not bad. This is rather exciting. Um, stepping in somewhat at the last minute, very kindly, over the weekend, uh, is Matt Medeiros, who's over there. I'm sure you all know Matt. Introduce yourself, Matt. Hey, this is the first time I've actu actually had to live present my new job title. So <laughs> I am now the director of podcaster success at a company called Castos, castos.com, and Seriously Simple Podcasting Plugin. And of course, Matt Report, and I'm happy to be here. That is so cool. I'm going to plug them in a minute because I use them and love them. And down there, we have Paul Lacey. Hello, Paul. Hello, yeah, Paul Lacey here from the Dickerbird Studio. And we're a WordPress agency based in the UK. And the majority of the work that we do is partnering up with other creative agencies to help them deliver their WordPress stuff. WordPress stuff. That's WordPress cool. stuff. It's WordPress yeah. stuff. That's what we're all about, <laughs> WordPress stuff. And then somebody new, which is really nice. We've got Amitai Gat, who prior to joining the, the conversation just seconds ago, I said had the coolest name I've ever heard. I really like it. There's just something dead cool about it. Amitai, tell us who you are, where you're from, and which company you represent. Hey, so uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm the head of product at uh, Elementor. Uh, I think you guys know Elementor, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just explain a little bit. We're the, uh, well, we're the top page builder for WordPress. Um, yeah, based here in Tel Aviv, and happy to be here. So thanks for having me, Nathan. You are so welcome. There's there's two nice things that I get to do at the beginning. The first one is to is to tell you about Castos because although Matt has declined the opportunity to plug it, I will. Um, honestly, if you've got any clients who have pretensions of putting together a podcast and they are intending to use WordPress, this is from this is a sincere thing that I'm about to say. I'm not just saying this because Matt's here. Just don't even look anywhere else. Just go to castos.com, C-A-S-T-O-S.com. It's everything put inside of WordPress. You basically upload a file. That's it. You know, you've got to connect things at the beginning, but then once you've done that, it's totally done for you. There's nothing else to think about. No going over to this third-party platform, logging in, creating a post, saving it, putting the images over there, copying the iframer. It's just done. Takes seconds. Don't look any further. It's the, it's the best. So congratulations on the new job, uh, Matt. I'm really pleased for you. Thank you. Thank you. Very excited. And if anyone has questions, you can just email me direct, matt at castos.com. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, I'm used to you saying Matt at MattReport.com. Yep. Matt at Castos.com. The other thing which is quite exciting, should we, Amitai, do you want to do this now or do you want to do it later? Up to you guys. Okay, should we do it now? Is that all right with everybody? Because I'm, I'm really intrigued. About, sure, yeah. about six weeks ago, I, I don't know where I was. I might have been on Ben Pine's Twitter feed or something, but he... um somebody shared a picture of a new office which just looked really nice really really nice it is nice <laughs> it is nice and yeah. so i said to amitai slightly jokingly why don't you show us around the new office and he said yeah all right and yeah. so we're gonna go on a quick guided tour of the yeah, uh the elemental guys, office I, I will have to put on my mask though uh, oh you know so it's okay like i'm in full yeah. solidarity yeah. hold fire yeah, as go. long as I'm in a you know closed room, that's fine. But once I go out, but uh, sure, I'll take you guys for a little round here. Yeah, let's um, put let's put Amitai front and center if that's all right. Let's do him. Look at this. I will mention I haven't told anyone I'm doing that, so if they uh, if they talk to us in Hebrew, um, don't be don't be alarmed. So oh look, you. look at it. <laughs> Oh, he's broken off. Can I walk in? <laughs> we're back. We're back. We're back. Pretty nice. Oh, wow. we're back. Okay. Um, you guys can meet here. Uh, this is Shiloh, by the way. He's the product manager of the Elementor editor. Hello. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can't hear you guys because I'm uh, oh, got okay. my AirPods on. Um, and uh, yeah, so we got a pretty, pretty nice office here. Um, I don't know, Nathan, you want me to 
do the whole tour or just uh well just a quick nip round you know how many people have you got yeah. working in there um well there's room for uh for uh for a couple hundred um but right now you know during covid not everybody's here so maybe 10 percent employees are here uh so we got a lot of room here um we don't have a strict policy so anybody can come you know if it's uh it's okay so we're not allowed to go for more than uh, i think 50 percent of the employees okay. but um yeah it's pretty nice yeah we got, uh, we got showers and everything here <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. That yeah. just gives you, you know what? Whenever you, how to put this into words, right? You you hear about the success of things like Elementor, and you know, there's a, a few others in the WordPress space, not necessarily in the page builder space, but and and it, it kind of just sort of washes over me. I don't really understand what that means. You know, I don't I don't inhabit offices of that magnitude, but then I see it. Are you in Tel Aviv? Yeah. So yeah, office space, presumably in Tel Aviv, is fairly costly. You know, it just gives me some impression of just how serious you guys are. That's amazing. You well, really wanna... it, it's it's more than um, you you have to to be in a place that's that's accessible if you need to bring on the uh, on the the people, right? So we're located very close to the to the train, uh, very close to where it's e easy to get to, uh, just so that you know we have people from all over working here. And uh, so, you know, you know, you have to be accessible. That's why we're kind of in a central place. Uh, so it's very, it's very utility kind of focused. It's pretty impressive. Um, Matt Davis says, can we get a full tour of the local area as well, <laughs> including fancy coffee shops? Uh, I suspect the answer is no. And uh, <laughs> Facebook user who is unknown to us, if you are that Facebook user who just wrote needs an air hockey table, I bet there is one tucked away. Oh, there is one for sure. Uh, <laughs> yay. Uh, Touche. <laughs> um, if you go into the StreamYard, if you go into the link at the top of the Facebook post, there's a link you can click on. It's StreamYard.com something. And if you click on that, you get to you get to find out. Uh, we get to find out who you are. Thank you for that, Amitai. What a, what a fun little thing that was. Right, I'm going to put my screen up. And, uh, so, so do you know so, what? Go on. i got a new monitor. Check it out. <laughs> So yeah. beat that amateur. Yeah, yeah, and I put <laughs> I put some books on my shelf over there. There's a couple of extra books you may have noticed, and yes. they look great. Yeah, yeah, looking good. Those looking books. Good. Yeah. yeah, you need a, you need a bookshelf like that, and you've got it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> IKEA twelve ninety nine, real yeah. good. <laughs> Calax, <laughs> Calax, yeah, probably something like that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're not here to talk about IKEA or any of that nonsense. Let's get on with this. So this is us WP Builds. This is our website wpbuilds.com. If you click on this link, subscribe. You can subscribe to our newsletters and so on. Join our Facebook group. Honestly, honestly, I say this over and over again, but it is, it, it, we're going to cover a story today, which we covered a bit last week. And my understanding is that it, it got quite heated, but it didn't in our group. And I, I, that, I think, says volumes. I, for some reason, reasons unknown to me, it's very polite. But um, anyway, it's a nice group to be in, wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe. If you want to post a job, it's this link. I haven't had anybody posting a job yet, so I'm just going to keep banging away at that. This is our deals page. We've got loads of money off all sorts. Um, anyway, go to that if you need to spend some cash this week. Here's our news archive. It lives in here. And each week we've got an animal. And this week, I can't even remember what animal. It's an armadillo, I think. Anyway, the armadillo is telling us about the WordPress news for the week commencing the 10th of August, 2020. And we're going to start on this one. Okay, so I've been doing this droning on about WordPress news for years. And every so often you get a week, which is a good week, a really not like a meaty week. This is the meaty week. This is a lot going on this week. Really pleased uh, to have such, such an informed panel. 5.5. This is a pretty slimmed down version. Basically, it's all about speed. It's all about uh, XML sitemaps, which I suspect many of you will be figuring out how to turn off very quickly, perhaps not. Uh, lots and lots going on in the block editor. It's foundational work, really, as opposed to you're not going to log in and suddenly go, oh, my life is transformed, but it lays the foundations to transform your life, possibly with this block patterns feature. Um, and there's a bunch of accessibility stuff. If you're a developer, check out this bit at the bottom, awful lot in there for you. 
but as always, it's it's handled in much more detail over on WordPress Tavern. Sarah Gooding writes all about it, but she basically goes in to the same stuff. Um, she was a little underwhelmed by block patterns until this release, and when I think five or six block patterns came around, and she feels they're a bit be better. But here, here we are, XML sitemaps, lazy loading images, I forgot that one, um, improved accessibility, theme and theme and plugin updates can be done via just uploading a zip file. Automatic updates, why isn't that mentioned anywhere? Anyway, automatic updates can be turned on if you wanna go that way. I haven't done that yet, I'm too frightened. Um, and then of course the important dash icon news, which we'll just skirt over. Right. Who's first? Who wants to dig into this? Just literally interrupt. Go. Uh, I, you know, I thought it was an interesting update. Of course, uh, I've covered the uh, the block pattern stuff, and I think what we'll talk about later on is the uh, site. Uh, I think it's called site building. Of course, the name's escaping me now. That's going to be built into core. Uh, hey, thumbs up all around. I think it's awesome that we're finally getting block patterns. Uh, you mentioned underwhelming. I feel like Gutenberg has just been underwhelming all along, but when we get to where we where we are now, when we look back two years, it's pretty amazing. I think like I've turned that corner a long time ago, uh, so I I've, am you know an advocate for uh, Gutenberg, and uh, I do enjoy using it. And the block patterns are only going to get better, just like the rest of the software uh, has. Uh, auto updates for plugins. Uh, and themes, that's a pretty amazing feat as well. Or not yeah. themes, but for uh, for plugins and core. Plugins. Um, because uh, if we all, I've worked at Pagely for the last three and a half-ish years. Uh, so that was something that we had always done for customers. And even ma other managed hosts that said they were managed hosts, they didn't even do the the updates, uh, especially for plugins. So it's going to be interesting to see how that you know turns the corner. I, I left Page Lee when we were having the conversation of how this impacts uh, server resources by having anybody be able to turn this stuff on. So I can imagine all other web hosts are thinking like what's going to happen when this is enabled or maybe they'll just disable it for their customers. But um, yeah, fairly good update, you know, in my yeah. professional opinion. Okay. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I, I think the auto updates, this is, uh, I think that's, uh, that's great. I think, you know, like this is, uh, um, yeah, I've, I've been thinking about those, you know, like, uh, for, for years now, right? Like this is, this is, uh, this is pretty crazy that, that, uh, we've had to go, you know, like you've got a 200 websites that you have to maintain, you know, on every update, I think it puts a lot of responsibility on developers, obviously, because we all know why, why, why everybody's afraid of it. Right. But, uh, but generally I think this is, this is a great direction. And, uh, I, I, I think this is, this is a very significant, uh, significant upgrade. Um, yeah. What about you, Paul? Uh, auto, auto updates is definitely my favorite uh, new feature from this and just seeing it in the, the plugins area was cool. Uh, just uh, adding something to what Matt said about um, getting on board with Gutenberg and the block editor. Uh, for me, like every update that we've had for weeks and well, the majority of the last year or however long it's been, has been a little bit like me sitting at a um, sitting at a Brazilian meat buffet, being a vegetarian or a vegan or something. I've just been waiting for, you know, the right the right stuff to come along, and and because that's something I was I was messaging Matt about just over the weekend. Sorry, uh, sorry for messaging on the weekend, then Matt. But it was, uh, <laughs> but it was it was you know this this the, the way it was directed, Gutenberg and the block editor feels very much for for bloggers and that kind of thing. And I'm a, I run an agency and we do a different type of site that, you know, that happens, but areas of the community uh, in the community are starting to create the products that I need to be able to have an alternative to a page builder sometimes, not for all the sites, but for some of the sites. So those products are getting created now. And finally, I can come to the table and start enjoying the block editor. So instead of just being exasperated every time there's a new thing, and I'm just like, I don't care about this. It's not relevant to me. This is another pointless thing. I should have had faith earlier on that the people who have made WordPress what it is now, like Elementor, you know, doing what they've done for page builds and stuff like that, would do the same thing for the, for the block editor. And they're starting to do that now. 
So I'm excited about this. I'm excited about all the new updates. It is a it is a huge update, but it is of course eclipsed by Paul's awesome T-shirt. Um, mm -hmm. Where where did you get the awesome retro T-shirt? Oh, Paul, man. Uh, uh, I'll try and think about it. Yeah, it's you can order them online. Uh, you can just, you can have anything. This is a Karate Kid, the <laughs> baddies, <laughs> uh, the leg. <laughs> yeah, the um, the I, I think it's a I think it's a cool update. There's no way I'm going to turn the auto updates on. That's just staying off <laughs> totally the whole entire month. I'm not going to touch that. <clears throat> Although it's there, it's quite nice. I really thought about it from the point of view of server resources, but I I think it runs cron twice a day. I think that's what it's doing. And then so hopefully your cron won't coincide with everybody else's cron on the platform. Yeah. And, it's going to be uh, tough on a shared host. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So um, so that's staying off. But the you know the block editor stuff is quite cool. Sarah mentioned the the sort of block pattern. So the block patterns for those of you that don't know, it's basically just like like Elementor elements or Beaver Builder modules in that you can drag pre-configured stuff, testimonials or or what have you, or pictures of historical characters. As it turns out, we we probably need. Uh, you'll know what I mean if you go to 5.5 and try to look at the block patterns. But they're a bit underwhelming at the moment. What I mean is there's just not many of them. But give it time. I'm sure this is the direction. Yeah, of the last thing I'd say is just congratulations to everyone who's worked on it. There's an absolutely humongous list of people contributed to it. It's a serious, seriously massive release. And then just the final thing is uh, redbubble.com is where I get my t shirt. Oh. Redbubble.com. There we go. You, there gonna, there. you wait. Redbubble.com is now totally DDoS. They're not going to Server's gone down. Server's gone already. Down. Yeah. They're totally out of business. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Um, <laughs> I listen to the Twit podcast sometimes, and they genuinely do that. You know, they mention they have to not mention the name of websites because they just they just kill them because they have thousands of people watching at the same time. Yeah. Um, yeah, really interesting. But like I say, auto updates staying off. Right, OK, let's move on. What else have we got? Let me just put the, the screen back up. There we go. Done that one, done that one. So this is the next one. I don't know if this um, this is this is the one I was mentioning, actually. This is it wasn't Sarah Gooding who was underwhelmed. I've probably misspoken there. It was actually Justin who was underwhelmed. And, and here we are, Don Quixote, uh, pictures of Don Quixote. This is just to say that he thinks it's a great idea, but he thought he thought the implementation until really recently was he was quite castigating of it. I can't remember his words, but he basically said he didn't he didn't think it was as good as it could be. And then it's improved more recently. And now we've got these five or six block patterns and he seems to be happier. So that's good. But he does feel that this is, you know, this is full of belief. This is what he wants to happen in the near future. OK, I'll just move on. Does anybody care about the one Jay thing Perry? I care about that article is um, you know, we inherit websites sometimes, and they're often in a bit of a bad state. And this feels like another nail in the coffin for those old sites that uh, are not too well looked after. My my assumption is this means lots of old, badly built sites will break, which is bad news for them, good news for us people who develop new sites for people. So um, <laughs> it's almost that's, like that's, it was that's designed that way. Yeah, <laughs> built in obsolescence. Yeah. It's perfect. Make the... so Speaking of which, the support of this. Yeah. The, the only this. the only problems I heard about WordPress five point five this week were to do with jQuery, jQuery dot live, as opposed to jQuery dot on. Um, they were the only breaks that I heard of. The, anyway, but there's a jQuery article if you want to look at it. But it doesn't look like we're going to dwell on that one. Did, did anybody get a chance to read this? I thought this was such a good piece. It was Francesca Morano um, talking about her journey in WordPress. And so I should, for the sake of clarity, I should make it clear that in our news, we do, do it in sections. So we've done with the WordPress core bit. We're now into like the community uh, at wide. And um, there she is with Josefa, the project lead. And, and it's just about her journey through WordPress, how she got started, how she has ended up where she's ended up, how she's really looking forward to sort of the uh, the all-female lead, because that's what we've got for the, for the next release. 5.6 is an all-female lead. I have to be very careful here, don't I? I have to use the right language because I'm um, sometimes stray away. And all-female or people identifying as female, I think is the correct way of saying it. Um, but it's just a beautifully written piece. And by the end of it, I was kind of like, I was on her side. I just thought, yeah, I understand you. You sound a bit like, 
you sound a bit like the person that I want to be in charge of the project. So anyway, mm. it was a good piece. Nathan, there's, there's a picture down there, a black and white picture of loads of people sitting at tables. And uh, this, this very weekend, my heart was hurting actually for missing the genuine get togethers within the WordPress community, the physical get togethers, you know, meeting mm. people face to face. So I, I do like this article. I've not read all of it. I've just kind of skimmed through and looked at the nice pictures and everything. And it does make me just kind of think, I, I can't wait until we can all go to some WordCamp or, or, or meeting, which is obviously where me and you met, uh, Nathan. Yeah. And you and I met uh, because you set up a Beaver Builder meetup at WordCamp London a few years ago. And we've been, we've been good buddies ever since and loads of different opportunities come out of that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to when uh, we can we can see uh, this kind of stuff happening again. And reading this article, it just makes you realize it's not just engaging with people online. If you really want to get the best out of joining in with the community, then however you can find more alternative ways to get involved with things rather than just commenting and blogging or comment, you know, commenting on social media, that kind of stuff. Limited, admittedly, at the moment, but as soon as those opportunities start coming up, I recommend anyone to get involved with these things because that's why a lot of us are here today, all together on a on a on a show, uh, having great fun talking about what we love. I think there's a high chance that if you go to any WordPress event in the UK, you will in fact meet Paul Lacey. He is um, he's he's ubiquitous. Don't tell love, them that. You, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you love those events. It's, no, it was really. Oh boy, I do miss them as well. Yeah, mm. he'll be camping out on the next one. Just yeah. waiting for the doors to open. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he'll be that Apple fanboy guy with a tent yeah. three days in advance. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, nice piece. Right. Okay. Last week we we touched on this little chestnut. Uh, we only touched on it right at the end. In fact, we had to rush everything just to barely squeeze it in. So I thought we'd we'd do double duty on this one go for it again i know matt's written about it does anybody mind if i quickly preface it and then you can very thoroughly undermine everything that i've said because this is my understanding right um last weekend last a week last friday the astra theme was banned from the uh from the dot org repo theme repo for five weeks because whoever it was who pulled the trigger had decided that they'd been injecting with code, so not literally copied and pasted affiliate links, but they'd put affiliate links to products that they were sort of already endorsing by installing those products in their starter themes. So, for example, um, if you install one of their starter themes, WP Forms comes along for the ride. And so they'd put their affiliate link in via this code injection so that if you clicked it, they would get a kickback if you upgraded to WP Forms Pro. Anyway, they got booted out, but they've got over a million installs. So, you know, WP Drama, there's a problem. What do we do if we need to update Astra during that five-week period? A million sites. So it, it all got walked back. The guys at Astra apologized. And then it, from what I've been reading from Justin's article that we're looking at now, they re-apologized, sort of deleted an apology and then put a different apology up which the, the the founder of, well, the co-founder of Brainstorm for Sujay says there was no point in keeping the other apology up because it's sort of like over-promised stuff, which they're going to do anyway, and it cluttered up the apology. Anyway, where do we stand? Matt has written about this during the course of this week. Let me just get the... Uh, let me just get the URL and put it on screen, Matt, if that's all right. But you, uh, do you want not, to start just, off? Yeah, so it's just a podcast. Uh, there's no smart words on the page, uh, or probably in the audio. Uh, <laughs> affiliate links are <laughs> affiliate links are dead. Long live affiliate links. You know, I think that. Look, there is a guideline. I, I, I talked about this in the podcast episode. Yes, there is a guideline for affiliate links. Uh, no, you cannot sneak in affiliate links. Uh, into a product. Uh, smarter people than me know know that it's against the law in many governing countries. Uh, I get it. I understand it. But where we're at in the WordPress uh, economy uh, is that uh, people, this like we run this like a traditional SaaS business, hosted software as a service business. Uh, but it is like having a piece of software in everyone's home. Like we don't have that direct 
connection. In other words, you know, Elementor can't just be inside of a theme and they can just buy now Elementor. It has to go to Elementor's website. They have to purchase a license. This whole transaction thing has to happen. And for and and distribution is the name of the game in a lot of these things. And when you have a theme like Astro with a million active installs, they've done the effort. They've built a great product. They've been able to get a million people to install this on their websites. And then they knock on the door of other great plugin companies, except for one of them that I, I didn't know. And HubSpot, who cares about HubSpot? They're an IPO company. Uh, but they've knocked on the doors of other great plugin companies and say, hey, look, we've got a distribution channel. You've got a great plugin. Your plugin will fit very well into our theme. We'll support that connection it, through the means of actually building out templates for your product and probably support documentation and probably support hours when somebody says, hey, WP Forms doesn't look very well on Astro. What do I do? And there's a human there that says, well, did you check this style? Did you install this plugin, et cetera, et cetera. And the only way to monetize that is through an affiliate link. So again, I am not saying that what they did was right, but what has to happen, like we have to, figure out something where or not <laughs> uh where <laughs> where or product where product owners can monetize us now maybe they maybe a company like astra with uh, with the weight in the room can turn to an elementor and say hey look you know to be included here it's or you know there's a revenue share there's a, a sponsorship fee and of course they have to disclose this but how do products make money like at some point this theme has to like the only way to continue to grow is is to not just make the theme better, but it's to create other software, partner with other software. And how can they do that other than affiliate links? Um, that was my that was my take on it. Right. Mm. That was one half. The other half was, oh, it's the ambiguity of the theme review team. We'll just give you five weeks for 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 breaking this this guideline. Where was the guideline for the five weeks? Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, and yeah. and that was as someone who uh, sold themes, uh, put themes in WordPress.org repo before. We talk about the wild, wild west of the WordPress economy. That is all. That was at least in my time was the wild, wild west. I mean, you uploaded a theme with a name, and they were just like, "Nah, we don't like that name. You can't, you can't install that." Uh, you, you know, then there's, we, we don't like the way that you're, you're promoting your, your paid link yet, yet you look at like a dozen other people on the repo and you're like, well, they're all doing it. Why can't I do it? Right. There's, there's famously so many stories around that, you know, and, and the, what, where I'll wrap my thought process up is they're all volunteers. We should, you know, we should not be pointing fingers at, at the volunteers and maybe just maybe we should turn it into a traditional marketplace where the foundation makes money. The foundation makes money, <laughs> uh, which can be used towards uh, the eventual word camps that we'll have. Uh, maybe sponsoring people to go uh, for the flights, maybe sponsoring uh, the, the volunteers from the theme repo and, and wordpress.org in general, or maybe applying this uh, in some kind of scholarship, right? Where you're volunteering, you should probably get paid, but we don't have the funds to pay you. But here's what we'll do. Uh, we'll we'll give you a sponsorship to uh, LinkedIn Learning or Lynda.com, whatever that, you know, the massive one is or whatever, like any other other educational pieces that we can actually give back to these volunteers so that, you know, they don't need the extra stress of people like me, <laughs> you know, sounding off about this stuff or the product owners that they have to deal with in the in the forums and, and GitHub and or uh, uh, Slack and all that stuff. So there's just too many things at play. It's like WordPress is, there's a lot of money involved, but not enough <laughs> for like the governments to step in, uh, yeah. you know, and, and we still don't control everything. Like at the end of the day, the WordPress brand is not ours. We're all here just getting our piece of the pie. So lots of stuff at play with this one. I am not so upset about the affiliate link play other than yes, they broke the rule. Let's make some guidelines now that says what happens when you break this rule, but yeah. also from the product owner, how else can we make money? Yeah, yeah. And thank you. That was, well, as always, significantly better than my version of events. Uh, Paul or Amitai? Amitai, do you want to go first? I... Yeah, yeah I, I, you know, I, again, I, I, I think that 
Elementor, you know, it's a, it's also we're, we we face this uh, quite quite often. Uh, I think this is. I think we wanna we wanna have you know, um, plugin authors and, and and companies being being able to to make money uh, and build build businesses. So uh, we're doing that. But I I, I think this. Uh, I, I agree with Matt that sometimes there's there's uh, there's challenges here, uh, and and uh, you know there, there it it will be great if. If uh, we work on the ambiguity and and everything is clear and you know you have the predictability and you have some the legitimate ways of how to operate, uh, so that you can build a real business, right? And I think that's important for for all players in the ecosystem, because uh, you know if you if you want to build a business, you, you need to have those kind of uh, you you need to have the predictability and understand you know exactly what you're doing. Uh, when there's too much gray areas, it's it's just it's not you know. It's not good for business. Uh, hmm. So that's just kind of my take. So yeah. let, let me ask you this, Amitai. When is Elementor's hosted version going to come? <sighs> Ouch. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I've seen, Soon, I've I seen hope. your I, I, I've seen your videos. Um, you know, I'll just I, I, I don't want to talk about, you know, products that hasn't been released yet. I'll just say that, you know, we're um, we're looking into many, many ways in which we can, you know, kind of make make life better for our users, right? Uh, yeah, uh, and and so. that and 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 that's the point, and and it's what you should do. It's what everyone will do, and it will just be like with this constant uh, friction. Uh, affiliate links aside, like this is where product companies have to go in order to survive, right? You, you have to pull that experience away from WordPress. It's too challenging for your business, right? How are you, you're just gonna bank on somebody upgrading in a WordPress admin screen? No, right? You're gonna come out, Elementor is gonna come out with more products, uh, probably eventually e-commerce, and you're going to want that all in your system. Yes, you'll probably play well with WordPress for the foreseeable future, but business sense will tell all of us, every product company, should have its own experience, its own hosted platform. Because we don't control this type of thing in, in like Asher getting shut down for uh, over a little over a month. You just shut down your business for over a month. <laughs> I yeah. mean, obviously they're back, but I mean, but even then, like what guaranteed them to come back? They had to apologize. They could have just kept them shut down for five weeks. I mean, it's just, it's crazy when you think of it from the business perspective. Yeah, and it, it is interesting from, from Sujay's point of view, you kind of feel that, this, not only did the story gain traction because of the fact that it was Astra, if it had been some theme with, I don't know, 20,000 downloads, this would have made, there would have been no news. That, that that theme would have just gone away for five weeks, but it didn't. And so it made the news. Everybody had their opinion. You know, they sat on one side or the other, watched the story develop. And then because it was news, it was able to, the team were kind of, their hand was forced a little bit and they had to repeal it. It's kind of interesting mm -hmm. the, what they've done as a sort of way of slapping Astra, but not slapping Astra, they've kind of demoted them by some kludge with the date. They've kind of, they've, they've pushed the, I don't really know, but they've fiddled with the date of the last update or something like that, which has pushed them down. So they're not surfacing right at the top. Um, but they're talking in the future that there may be a way of simply having you invisible on the repo, but still available for updates. And because this just came out of the blue, I think that's a really interesting point that you raised, Matt. You know, if you're in this ecosystem and you are relying, as Elementor will be, relying on the goodwill of the theme team um, or, or the plugin repository, um, it's, a, it's a big deal to, to have somebody without necessarily a very clear set of guidelines who can just, with the click of a finger, take your business away for five weeks. And five weeks is really long time um yeah it's a it's a big story by the way just because there was some blowback for the actual individuals concerned the another plan for the future is to issue these takedown notices with a generic twitter handle uh theme team review trt messenger so that there's no one individual who gets who gets labeled with the blame which um which is interesting anyway this i, I feel this story has probably run its course paul do you want to I got, more to, I got more to, to add, add to the story uh, to a certain extent. Um, I think uh, I, I'm never I'm never kind of keen on the uh, huge drama show. 
that happens with these sort of things. And, you know, there's, there's lots of uh, negativity and, and ideas and that sort of stuff, which, are, which is great for the ideas. But I, it's one of the reasons I'm barely on Facebook anymore is it's just I just don't like the, the drama of things. and the, Because I think there's a, with these sort of situations, there's, a, there's always two sides. There's, the, you know, there's, there's one side, the other side, and then there's actually the truth. And that's that's where everything comes down. And depending on which way you look at it or which comments it's you read. a great name for a podcast. There's that side, there's yeah. this side, and then there's the truth coming up next. <laughs> dot, <laughs> dot com. Dot com. But, and, and one of the, the sad thing for Astra right in a way is that because there wasn't uh, a system this story is much bigger and they take and then you know sujay who yeah he's done the wrong thing but he's had a really bad couple of days and there'll be people listening to me now going i don't give a damn he deserves it but we do have to forgive people sometimes and let them move on and unfortunately for for sujay and astra they were the big fish that got caught doing it Right. But then if you look at uh, Amatai's company, right, so trailblazers, basically, you've got Astra, then you've got Elementor, trailblazing in the WordPress corporate business sense. you got uh, the next piece that we're going to cover on, on our list is Matt Mullenweg getting involved with commenting on a particular plugin score. And... Beautifully. I done. know that... Uh, Ele- Ele- no, I'm not... Hang on. I've got more. I've got more. Oh, Element- okay. Elementor... <laughs> I should have, I should have segued into that afterwards, but Elementor, uh, you know, a lot of people predict. I know you can't talk about it, but predict that Elementor are going towards a SaaS direction. Now, it doesn't matter if it's Elementor or someone else. Let's say a company who is massive in WordPress and is trailblazing and leading the way and providing awesome value is going in a certain way. But Matt Mullenweg is on Twitter putting them on watch because they got fifteen million dollars or something like that. And then there's not a system of. Uh, figuring out if you do something wrong, what the punishment is. So the amortized company or someone else knows what rules they can work within, how they can get close to the edge, keep adding value, but making sure they're not in trouble. And that's the problem, that there isn't a way to for Amatai and Elementor to know what the limit is that they can get to before they're crossing the line. And Matt Mullenweg will get involved and go and post something on Twitter or tell someone at retweet, whatever it is, to shut shut Elementor's updates down. Volunteers who did it, we appreciate everything that they do. Um, the final thing I'd say, again, unfortunate for Astra that they were the one that got caught who were big fish, right? I went to a show, right? I went to an air show, and at this air show, I was there for two days, and at the air show, two Russian jets crashed into each other. I remember it was a big thing, it was really scary. Ooh. Everyone was fine, no one got hurt, right? It was just, it was a big thing. The other thing that was going on at the air show was that I was 14 and going into this tent every day playing this computer game, F-19 Stealth Fighter. There was every day a raffle that allowed you to win a copy of the game. Me and my mate Ben figured out that we could tri- trick this raffle by because we saw that they were letting people pull the raffle tickets out. And I filled in a thingy, stuck it down my sleeve, right, put my arm in on day two and pulled out Ben's winning ticket. Ben stepped forward as if like, wow, I've won even before they've opened the thing. So that that was really suspicious, okay? And so they said, look, we can't prove you cheated. They pulled us aside because we had cheated, basically. We broke the rules big time. They pulled us aside and said, we're gonna have to give you the game, but we wanna talk to your dads first. So they pulled our dads (laughs) up and and we got in trouble, but we did get the game. The point is, right, two aircraft crashed on, on into midair, there's an explosion in midair. If you ask the dude who we tricked, what do you remember about that air show? He'll go, these two little <laughs> little whippersnappers <laughs> tricked us out of a twenty dollar game, and they got away with it. And they'll remember that before he remembers that two Mig twenty nine fulcrums crashed into each other. So it's really unfortunate for the team that they were. It's such a limelight in this situation, and and yeah, they did it wrong. I cheated, they cheated, but you know they they probably don't deserve to be chastised as much as they will be for the coming years. Every time they're mentioned, it, they won't leave this down. Like like I can't. I'm always oh, the guy that Next time we do this podcast, this live show, mm-hmm. will you will you put will you actually light a fire in that fire, and would you mm-hmm. sit on that chair and play <laughs> a guitar? 
Um, yep, no worries. Because that, that, that was such <laughs> a great story. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, you know, that's the thing, you know, it's, that's what people will remember because yeah. the story got blown out. It yeah. is big story. And people will say, oh, they've broken this law and they've broken that law. Well, everyone's broken a law. The, the funny thing here, though, is we don't really we don't really have a very clear law. If the law can be interpreted, then just completely obliterated within a couple of days, then it's not really a law. So can, mass confusion reigns. Some yeah, people have got it very clear in their own heads what it was, and other people. Yeah, not the so. law for the repo, the law of the of affiliate links and disclosing affiliate links. Yeah, okay. I, it's I, a, it's, yeah, it's well, there I was to protect. Say, us. I like the idea of um of we need yeah. what we need is a is a selection of fathers. Like you suggested, you know, yep. I think Sujay needs to go and see lots of people's fathers. And is, uh, is, you know. Matt Mullenweg wants to have a word with Sujay's dad. Yes. And it will all get sorted out. That's right. And they can <laughs> play a game of kaplunk to see. That's the kind of serious stuff we talk about on this. Yeah, the, yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm. Amitai now is probably just thinking, what? The, yeah, what am I what doing here? Yeah. <laughs> um, by the way, Beth wants to know what Matt's podcast is. Oh, shock, horror. It's the Matt Report. That's all you need to know. The Matt Report, probably any podcast player will serve you that up. In fact, if you just go to Google and type in the Matt Report, there you go. That'll do it. Um, now, the beautiful segue, not that one, the beautiful segue. Paul, you sort of introduced this one. This is a weird, weird little story in that Matt did sort of get himself in a bit of trouble this week because he, well, did he? I don't know. Can he get in trouble? I don't know. Yeah, Matt Mullenweg. Matt Mullenweg. Sorry, yeah. not Matt Medeiros. Um, um, we may go and have to speak to Matt, Matt Mullenweg's father at the end of this. He he sort of said he wouldn't, there's a, there's a disable on Splash CDN plugin, which has sort of come around on the back of Matt Mullenweg saying he would advise people not to use the Unsplash official plugin to download images. Uh, because by default, now again, I might have got this wrong, by default, it, it, it goes to their server to download it off their CDN. I think Matt's ideal plugin would find it on Unsplash, download it to your server, and then you've got a copy of it, and you can just link to it in that way. And I think there's some controversy over the the fact that data may be flying at, against GDPR or whatever. So he he gave this plugin a one star review, and uh, and then there was <laughs> there was only one comment, uh, and it was somebody else saying, "Hang on a minute, don't automatic own pixels, and if automatic own pixels." Aren't you a competitor? And if you're a competitor, should you be talking about this? There you go, more WP drama. Two in a week. Come on, anybody. I've, I've lost all my energy after my story. Matt, yeah. Matt, you must have something to say on this. Well, I mean, look, it's <clears throat> it's the same thing. Um, you know, I, I think this, this Asher story precedes a lot of some of these other topics that we're going to talk about including this one is just like where does the disclosure come in you know again who owns what in this space you know it, it is very wild wild west jetpack is just notably the the biggest trojan horse it's like a trojan horse within a trojan horse within a trojan horse at this point um you know and maybe there's something there with jetpack which was uh, cdn which used to be known as photon images they serve up images on their cdn uh, you know, so I, you know, again, who knows why he even comments on things, uh, one star from, uh, the founder, co-founder of, uh, this open source software is just something that should, you know, he shouldn't be doing. Uh, there's plenty of other plugins I could tell him to go leave a one star review on, <laughs> you know, this is, this is certainly not, you know, not one of them. And, uh, you know, who knows why he does things that he does, but I mean, when he does it, it just, it makes the conspiracy theorists certainly kick up some dust because it's just, well, you have Jetpack, you have this, you know, why are you jumping in on this? I mean, Jetpack, I think when you have the CDN enabled, uh, don't quote me on it, you have to go back and check because I think they might have changed it. It saves a copy of your site, uh, obviously, on the CDN. It's how CDN technology works. But, I mean, they're doing some questionable things too when you have this. And are they disclosing that at all? corners of activating these features um i don't know but you know it's just not yeah. fair that this guy comes in and drops in one stars on, on these types of things yeah and also again like the, the example being that if it wasn't matt mullenweg if it was let's say for example me 
who given somebody a one star, it's just not even important. But Matt right. does it, and it's like it's big news. It's. Yeah. I'm also not defending Unsplash because I am not a lawyer. I don't know what the license truly means like when if i use unsplash it's always like a photo of a car it's never of a person which yeah. i don't even know if that even helps i think it, <laughs> it does just, matter no i think it does matter like in yeah. my head i'm just like i don't want to use anyone's face <laughs> it's just a picture of a yeah. sign um so i mean that's what i do when i use unsplash images in demos and stuff but uh, i see also don't know what that does for their license the piece on uh in wp tavern made the point that the unsplash <laughs> Yes, it's just crazy money. On Splash costs forty two thousand dollars a month. The server costs are forty two thousand dollars a month, so it's half a million a year. So you know, it's lovely that we all get nice free images, but half a million a year for I, free images. You know, somebody's I, got to be paying for it. Um, I would have imagined. I would have imagined it would have been more. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, well, it's a, it's a bargain in that case. But uh, anyway, the the point being that somebody's you know you you can't keep doing this stuff for nothing somebody's got to dig yeah. into their pockets and if they've if they figured out a way of extracting some tiny portion of data that which they can sell along and it's clear in their terms and conditions you know um unless we've got a rival oh yes we do pixels there you go yeah well i think the whole point of it was because you know they're they're trying to build a platform like from the from the nuts and bolts of it the more traffic you push and it, it's probably it probably doesn't even matter for a company their size at this point, but the more CDN traffic you push, the less your cost per terabyte is going to be, right? This is just back of the napkin math. So the more they can push through their CDN, the, you'd expect the cheaper, quote unquote, the cheaper would be to run those services. Uh, but they're also trying to collect data, right, to to give to creators. I mean, I think that's their play. It's a creator's platform. Look how many views your photo has got, you know, through the Unsplash right. website. There, there's a brand play. Um, you know, I think the other day I, I logged on and uh, like the whole homepage was like the, the new Dell XPS laptop. So I'm sure there's a little bit of yeah. that there where yeah. if you go there, you, ads can be, you know, quote unquote ads can be displayed of a product that you looked at. Uh, so there's like that whole play there and they're just trying to run a business. It's just, I don't know. It is what wow. it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I wonder if Matt will be more cautious going going forward. Well, Probably. Not. Is, uh, I'm an advocate of free speech. Right? Matt should be able to say whatever he wants on yeah. the correct platform. Be quiet. But uh, but but <laughs> but as Phil Johnston has pointed out in the comment on the review. Oh, is that, is that the, guy, the guy? The guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Yeah, there's Thank only you. one comment. Yeah. He's just pointed out that this isn't a plugin review. So yeah. why is this on the review? Section. Come on, Matt Mullenweg. You should know. <laughs> you should. You should know that this is the product review part, and you've got a huge Twitter following and all sorts of other platforms to, you know, use your uh, free speech to to have a conversation about. Um, you've also got the uh, the the rules of the theme and the plugin. Oh no, you don't do you? There isn't a rule for the theme or the plugin. Do you know how to, you know, how to um, how to solve problems like this? But you know what I really did enjoy was when um, DHH, uh, DHH, I don't know his actual name, um, the guy from uh, Ruby on Rails had oh David yeah. David Henry Heinemann or something that's the guy yeah, yeah. him and uh, you know Matt Mullenweg had a kind of an argument oh they had a big something. falling out didn't they that's right yeah. but, but they had a really good conversation which yes to me was only half the conversation and I'd love to see the second half of that mm -hmm. where they kind of put the cases to each other. And to me, I think when there's something big and fundamental like that, I would love to see somebody, you know, um, in the middle hosting a conversation between two people with opposing views and different ways of looking at the way that the community is benefiting or being manipulated by a plugin or an ecosystem, whether they're being manipulated by the open source ecosystem or the, the commercial one. So... I would love to see something like that. If Matt's going to put something out like that against a company and makes kind of accusations that is, you know, in a comment this long, that is clearly a much bigger thing than that. I would love to see a bigger conversation on it. And I hope that's what we see, like it is with DHH. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well done. Let's move on. Let's go to this one. I, I'm just going to mention this one really quickly, just because right at the bottom, it's Justin Tadlock. Um, 
and his his interesting story, shall we say, his sort of struggle with just being stuck at home. And we're all, I suspect we're all going through it. I know Amitai was, although things have opened up in Israel. It's definitely a lot easier now than it was in the UK. And I, I suspect the case is true in America. But still, you know, things are not back to normal. And, and it's all about Justin's story. The reason I'm really mentioning it is because if you scroll right down to the bottom, shameless plug for Big Orange Hearts. If you have any, um, any concerns in this area, then click that that link there or just go to bigorangeheart.org if you want to talk to somebody about this and i know that there's a lot of people who do and they make use of the service thank you Dan, and everybody over at big orange heart i know that matt's been a supporter over the years uh so yeah that's the reason i'm mentioning that one right okay next section then is this one plugins themes and blocks i'm just going to quickly mention the first three and then we'll We'll get to Amitai, who's got something to talk to us about. Uh, this is a nice new plugin called uh, Convert Reusable Blocks to Block Patterns. I'm not sure it's called Reusable Blocks Extended. Basically, if you've got reusable blocks, you can convert them into block patterns. It sounds a bit ridiculous, but reusable blocks are kind of like global. You can, If you change it in one place, it goes and changes everywhere else. This decouples that. So you can then cr create a block pattern, which you can then just drag anywhere. It's almost like pre-configured modules. Very cool. Seems to be getting a lot of nice attention. So that's the first one. Uh, we're not going to even talk about that. I'm going to talk about this one instead. Just a new feature added to Beaver Builders Power Pack. Um, the guys over at Idea Box have added this thing. Um, it's called a content ticker. I think it's quite a nice little addition. You know, you can fiddle with it and make things. Scroll around like that. Really nice. Well done, guys, over there. And I fear that I may have got this, the, the number wrong here, um, Amitai, because I think you've gone beyond Elementor Pro 3 Beta 2. I think you said you're onto Beta, well, more. Um, yeah. Do you want to tell us what's coming down the pipe in Elementor? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually seen a piece that, that Matt did on, on, uh, on the new theme builder. Uh, it was great, by the way. Thank you. I think you. Uh, you really nailed it. Uh, so yeah, so Elementor three, we, we really kind of went, you know, went to basics there. I did a lot of work on on kind of getting everything right in terms of the workflows, uh, finishing all those pieces that were missing. Uh, did a huge rewrite. So you know, some of the things are not kind of visible. But when you, you know, sometimes you kind of really have to sit down and rework the infrastructure of everything now that you know where you're going, you know, have to make sure that everything kind of works right so that you can build on top of that. So there's, there's been a ton of work that's, uh, that's gone into that. Um, huge performance improvements, um, like truly noticeable. Um, and we did a new theme builder. And obviously, the, uh, uh, there's some, some other features like the, the, the design system, the globals. So this is all coming out soon, um, and and so far it's uh, I, I think the, the the feedback has been really good. We've been rolling out the betas so that we can get the you know some good feedback again with such a such a huge version. You know you really have to make sure that everything works. Um, some of the improvements uh, and the changes. You know we kind of took aim at getting down again the, the performance uh, and also the the kind of like the 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 bloatness, you know, kind of slimming everything down, uh, which is always difficult with such, you know, like we have so many websites uh, using Elementor that every change, uh, you know, you're running the risk of breaking existing websites. Yeah. So there's a lot of work that's been going into that. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's really exciting. Can't, can't wait for this to, to, to go out. When you, um, when you put out a call for beta testers, I'm sure you've got like a regular bunch of people who, who help you out, but is it, is it, enough how to say it you know you're always so pleased that you've squashed the bugs beforehand or you do you still want people to to jump on board or have you got enough people helping you out now you know it's always you know we got a we got a lot of beta testers um and and the feedback is always great um uh i think i think there's 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 always bugs right like the, the that's software right like the and that that's why you do this and i think that uh you know i've been hearing uh some feedback about you know a lot of uh, a lot of 
patches, you know, a lot of versions coming out. And I think that in WordPress, this is kind of like the, the whole upgrading thing, you know, going back to 5.5 and, and the auto updates, the whole kind of upgrade thing is like a bad thing. But if you look at software, like SaaS software or, you know, in the cloud where you, you continuously deploying updates, you know, whenever there's a bug, you fix it and you push it to production. Uh, and I think that uh, this kind of, I think that's a good thing, right? Like, you know, you want to be able to react and fix and push it out. Um, and I think that actually once auto updates kind of settles in and the whole culture around it uh, kind of, you know, builds up and everybody, you know, the developers understand that whenever they push a version, it's going to get automatically pushed out to all their, all the websites that are using their, their plugins. Um, I think this will be mu a much smoother process and, and eventually we'll get a higher quality software. Um, so uh, yeah, going back to the, to the beta, I think this is great. But I also think that, you know, you roll out a product, you fix it, you make it better, you iterate. And, and, and I think, I think that that'll be great with the, with the auto updates. When, um, when you've got the, you know, the big offices like you've got and you've got potential to sit 200 people in there. And I, I have a recollection that you are, you do have plus 200 people working at Elementor. Do you, do you get any impression over the period of time that it's been growing? Does it, does it just keep getting bigger? Um, obviously, you know, you don't have to reveal numbers or anything, but is the future bright or do, is there a point at which, you, again, leaving the SaaS whole thing to one side, is there any is there any point at which it sort of curves down a little bit or does it continue to do this? How's, what's the trajectory looking like? Do you need new users or is it okay for it to just sort of level off at this point? Well, we're, we're, we're not, uh, you mentioned number 200, we're, we're not there, um, ah, but, but we are growing. And we are hiring, by the way, like we're looking for uh, we're hiring globally, right? So uh, we're looking for a lot of people here. Uh, we're looking for, you know, a lot of people globally support people. Um, and yes, we're, we're growing. I think that's that's good. I think that we, we're, we're trying to provide a lot of value. And there's many ways that we, we you know, like, if only we can do all the things that we want to do, we can't, right? But but there's so much to do. There's so so many pains that that needs to be alleviated and 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 in terms of that you know we just we we want to grow uh both in terms of the users right like and and both in terms of of the the company and the people that work on the product so the the, the every time i see the statistic about wordpress and the top 10 million websites whatever it is it's 838 point something percent now that there is there is no point at which i see that number stagnate it just gets bigger and it always seems to go up by one integer every time I look. So, you know, a couple of months ago, it was 36. Before then, it was 33. And now we're on 38 point something. So I'm fully expecting that within two months time, it'll be ending in a nine or perhaps even starting with a four. And it just makes me think, God, you know, if we had if we had one percentage point to that each time, what does that mean? What is the audience growing? It's enormous. So you sort of think about glass ceilings and things, but then you think, well, no, the project itself is just getting bigger and bigger. So things like Elementor, that's just a bigger audience to, to hit each and every month. It's, and I'll tell you what, you do the marketing better than anybody. Your marketing is, it's no surprise that you are, you are where you Thank are. You. It's stunning, really good. We yeah. talk about oh, oh, pass this on to the team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. We I was going to say, I think um, Elementor is like a phenomena in WordPress or, I think um, I remember uh, back in the dot com boom. Uh, just Elementor just reminds me of some of the absolute trailblazer companies at that at that time. I think uh, you can imagine there could be a book written about it. And uh, but the, um, the the question I wanted to ask actually is that I was concerned for a while about page builders and the block editor and and you know is there a future for page builders and all this sort of stuff and it, it seems to me that there is such a massive market for Elementor or other page builders, even if the block editor is the main thing in WordPress because you've got these different user personas these days. And it seems that what you guys are doing is so smart that you're kind of building an all-in-one situation, whether that lives in WordPress or in, in a SaaS tool or a bit of both, it doesn't really matter. It just seems that you've really got your finger on the button with your who your user is. I don't think any other product in WordPress has ever had that level of um, connectivity with their users. 
So you know, good good luck with everything, and uh, thank that's you. all I can say. Yeah. Well, first Remark. of all, thank you, and, and 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 I think that that that's exactly it. I think that that Elementor was built on that. And, uh, and I think I had a previous conversation with, with Nathan a few months ago, and, and I think that is it. We, we always look at the user, right? Um, and, and I think the co-founders of Elementor, uh, they, that's kind of what's been guiding them. And they were kind of solving their own problem. There's so many employees here in Elementor that, you know, the freelancers that used to build WordPress websites, I used to do that. So I built WordPress websites, you know, as a freelancer for years. Um, and and, and it, it's so funny that, you know, whenever we have like a new feature or something that's coming out, the first thing we do is just we kind of walk around the company, right? And, and we show it to, to, you know, like half of the employees will have feedback on that because they're all using it in their day to day. They all know, you know, like, uh, Elementor for for years, and and we just really focus on that in terms of the product, and 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 I think that's exactly you know what you said. That is it, right? Like this is this is what's what's driving us forward. I remember um, hearing a comment from Bill Gates years ago when he was still incredibly important at Microsoft, and the um, somebody said to him, "If you only had a dollar left, what would you do with the last dollar?" And he said, "I'd buy adverts." <laughs> um, and it's like, okay, great. And I just feel that regardless of how good your product is let's just put that to one side right Let, let's just just ignore that the marketing is f really good it's like watching television you know i have no idea what your budget is for marketing but it must be pretty large but also the people who you've put in charge of that and the way that they produce it i mean it's just great it is literally like watching television it's indistinguishable sometimes but television ads Elementor ads, they're that good. And I think that, like I said, putting the quality of the product to one side, that alone must be worth a significant proportion of your, your market. So top, top congratulations. Yeah, well done. Well done. Are the Elementor co-founders in that tower? Just yeah, go get them. them. <laughs> in that tower right above your head, just yeah, looking down at everyone. Yeah, yeah. World just, domination. Yeah. Yeah, that's Actually, it, that's just, uh, there's a, just around here, there's, there's one of them just going there like so. Yeah, uh, nice. Well, they did. They've done a good job. They've done a good job. Right. Okay. Moving on. Let's talk very quickly. We're running out of time. There's some deals. Um, we were talking about page builders and things. This thing came along this week. It's called Stackable. It's like a suite of uh, blocks that you can buy. I, I've I tried it out. I quite like it. Uh, but that's that's the only new stuff really. Uh, the rest of it. Oh, there's essential add-ons for Elementor. I'm not connected with Elementor third party, as far as I'm aware. The other thing was to say that there was a critical vulnerability in Quiz and Survey Master plugin. All these plugins, look, never heard of it. 30,000 installs. Go get it updated because it's a remote code execution problem. We did a podcast about whether WordPress has a future or whether we should be going to Medium or something like that. I think you know where that argument ends up, but we talked about I, it anyway. I have this one queued up. I want to listen to this one. <laughs> oh, good. It's not worth it, Matt, honestly. No bother. <laughs> you know how it ends. I, I already did. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. And you can testify. It wasn't worth it. And, oh, this was nice. I just want to be very grateful. I think it's nice to be thankful when somebody does something nice. And the guys over at GoWP mentioned us, so I'm mentioning them in return. Thank you very much for a, a hat tip. I bet Matt's in there somewhere. Aren't Must you, Matt? be. If Matt's not Probably in here, not. I'm going to I'm going to take it all back and write a dirty letter. <laughs> oh, please, Probably mate. Not. Please, is Matt in here? Oh, is he? No, he's not. I'm so sorry, Matt. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> oh. Anyway, Matt should be in there. Sorry. And the last one that I want to say, which has got nothing to do. Uh, Yes, all right. Have everything. Go on. Thanks, UK. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't even get this. I don't even get it. But um, my kid, this is the end of the world for my child. My child plays Fortnite on his, on what is it called? That thing that they hold. iPhone. That's it. Um, and Apple have booted them off. And so have Google off the Play Store. This is interesting, right? This is an economy that I know nothing about. But apparently, if you're a developer and you push your stuff on iOS or Google Play, you get 30, Apple get 30%, Google get 30% of everything. So you can imagine a billion dollar, multi-billion dollar company like Fortnite. It must be hemorrhaging money, which it sees as completely undeserved to Apple. Of course, Apple's counter argument is, well, 
you try getting them to part with that money without iOS, to which Fortnite have to sort of scratch their chin a bit, I expect. But just an interesting, an interesting story about, you know, tit for tat. And then then I don't know if you've seen the iconic advert which Apple released when they were the underdog, where somebody sort of ran into a theater and threw a hammer at a threw a hammer at a screen, which was clearly a dig at Microsoft. Well, now Fortnite have turned that round and made Apple the, the bad guy on the screen and the hammer is now Fortnite. And so it goes. Storm in a teacup, but quite an interesting storm. Anyway, there I'm, you go. I'm wondering, Nathan, if you're showing this story in, in, in you know, the same context of the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Things imagine getting been Fortnite <laughs> randomly getting shut down for five weeks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> imagine, just imagine. They've got the lawyers out, though, and you can imagine. Can, 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 oh, this, they were imagine ready for it. Imagine if anyway. you're a lawyer here. It's like, oh, this could go on for weeks and weeks. But this, Wait, what's oh, interesting. This is, is going to be 10 years, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> what's interesting here is we just saw the same thing play out with. Uh, with uh, DHH and Jason Fried's uh, Hey.com product because they were having the same exact issue. Now, this is a marketplace. This is exactly what I'm advocating for at WordPress.org. Uh, let them tax the creators, but that way that there are defined guidelines uh, and recourse uh, for different, you know, different scenarios. But we saw this with Hey.com, much smaller player than Epic Games, and Epic Games is tons of money uh, to go for this. So... Uh, and that's what they did. They put in there. You either buy the credits for nine ninety nine through Apple, or you pay seven ninety nine yeah. through Epic. And yeah. of course, that's just not allowed in in that land. So no, no. But can you imagine? Like I was saying earlier, can you imagine the lawyers? It's like over here on my left, a multi billion dollar company. <laughs> on my right, a trillion dollar company. Yeah, <laughs> and they're going to fight each other. And. Yep. Uh, Maybe they should just play a game of Fortnite to see who Literally, wins. Literally, <laughs> just have a game of marbles or tiddlywinks yeah. or something like that to see what happens. Anyway, interesting story. This is a nice little white way to possibly end it. Beth says, I built an entire process in my course on how to create wireframes with Elementor. I will never stop using Elementor. You've got a big fan there, Amateur. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> yeah. So that was it. That's us. We're, we've run over by about seven minutes. I'm trying to keep it on time, but... I, Never going to manage that. But um, quickly, we go around and we say what we're doing this week. Um, I'll start with Paul. What's going on? I need to get home because we hide a hot tub and the guy's coming to get the hot tub. So I need to get there before he comes to empty the hot tub. It was awesome. Awesome weekend. I actually, you sent me some pictures and it did look I did nice. send you I mean, a they were the totally benign. Yeah. I have to say that at this point. They were, they were totally yeah. benign. There was nothing weird about those pictures. I've got some other ones I can send at you. All. If, right. if no, 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 good no. Enough. We'll okay. talk about this later, Paul. Not now. Not now. Um, right. Matt, what's going on this week? Uh, entering week three of my new job at Castos. If you're interested in starting a podcast, just email me, matt at castos.com. They will make it trivially easy to do. I had about 40 episodes under my belt when I moved over to Castos, and the, the, the head drama, you know, the drama that that could have been was pretty horrific and I didn't do anything. I sent them an email and then it was all just taken care of. I think it was Jonathan Bossinger just sorted it. So yes, do it or move over to them because they're dead good. What about you, Amitai? Well, I will be working on Elementor 3. Yeah. Full time. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. And hopefully we'll get it, get our hands on it soon. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That was very enjoyable. We'll be back next week. I suspect it will be different people. Well, Paul Lacey's usually here, but uh, maybe he'll be like a little sultana at that point, all shriveled from his hopped up experience. <laughs> now, on that bombshell, <laughs> I think we should probably end it. I'm going to put this little slide up. And if you guys just want to stick around for a few seconds, but I'm going to say bye. Thanks, guys. Take it easy. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Nathan.